Hey guys, Ariel over here. Today I'm going to talk about tree planting. That's another thing I worked on last year. Almost all of that was me working by myself with the major exception of Clay used that backhoe to dig me some tree holes, which was super helpful. Then I just had to fill everything back in, mulch, compost, rearrange the sod, all of that. That saved me a ton of time. But one of the big things I knew, like I talked about when we first bought this property, is that I wanted a lot more trees. So we started planting right away. Every time I had free time in between anything else, um, there was a lot of nights late last summer and into the fall until it was very cold that if I didn't have any obligations from one evening to the next morning, Burley and I actually camped down here in this cute little tent in the tree line that was here. Um, spent some very cozy nights uh, that were very cold outside sleeping in there so we could work on this kind of projects. And we got a pretty good start. I think last I kind of got 50 something trees and bushes planted already and a lot more to come. So what we've got going on here is the start of the tree plantings that are eventually going to go all along that fence line. There's no smoke now. All around and give us privacy and food. But for now, we've got a wide variety of, this is a bush uh, tart cherry, this is a bush sweet cherry, we've got various little conifers um, of different kinds, some carragana, otherwise known as Russian pea shrub, a big elderberry bush back here. They're currently lining the walkway to our very private little bathroom. Um, and a few big apple trees, including one cool little baby apple here that is right at this moment uh, was on the tree and we got it. So the next thing to do is get all those planted so they can start growing and go from being a bunch of little trees in random pots and buckets to being big trees, making food and shelter and habitat for birds and all of that good stuff. There are existing trees, mostly along one property side, a, a couple other places, but we want to add a lot more to that little strip of forest. Right here you can see the entrance we made to our private little sitting nook. Got room for two people to sit. Some little tables slash benches made out of scraps from other projects. And a little path right down to the Barbaline Creek. And it is a pretty shady, cool area to hang out if you're going to have a snack or sit down and catch your breath between other projects. Pretty well screened off from everything else. First here, I want to apologize for the, there is some excess wind noise in this video. I, you know, shot up most of this, obviously, last summer and fall, and I hadn't really been paying attention to the, how much more of a breeze there is out in the open compared to my clearing that I've been shooting videos in. Um, occasionally there is actually wind, but a camera with no wind filtering tends to make it sound like a hundred times more than there actually is. So I tried to edit the audio as best I could for this, and I have wind filtering equipment that is now in use. Plus, as we continue to plant more trees, that'll be less and less of an issue over time. So I'm just about finished planting this little Honeycrisp apple tree, and what I wanted to show you was the soil here. I did not know what the um, soil was going to be like on this property when I bought it. I was willing to work with growing good soil on top of whatever was here, so that wasn't my biggest concern. And the very first place we dug into it was out along the creek edge to get the, the bridge in, and there it looked almost exactly like the soil in the place where I've been living for six years now, which is rocks from small to, you know, huge, and um, a little bit of beautiful soil in between, but almost all big rocks. So I thought, well, maybe that's what this whole property is, and I can deal with that. It's just going to take some time to grow good soil on top of it. But we realized the first time I came out here and dug a hole in the rest of it, that this is actually what most of it looks like. We've got this beautiful, dark, rich, it even smells good, um, uh, topsoil. And there's occasionally like a little 
pebble in it, something like that, but there is not tons of rocks. And so that was super exciting. And that actually goes down a good foot, foot and a half in most places, which is pretty spectacular for this part of the world. Um, I know if you live in Iowa, you're gonna think that's not much of anything or some of the other places that have crazy deep pops in. But for here, that is a lot of soil. And then what is under that, where you can kind of see the change here in the color and texture where it was, uh, you know, dug out here to plant the tree is still some soil, but mixed with I'm not even sure exactly what kind of rock this is. I'll have to, to look it up. But it's got a lot of this um, kind of more long and skinny, um, kind of grayish shards. It's, it's almost like a gravel with some soil mixed in, and that's what's down under the topsoil layer. So that's what the, the ground looks like here, and that is um, a start on working on all this that I am pretty happy with. tree if you want it to live, dig a hundred dollar hole. Now to buy fruit trees this size cost me a little bit more than ten bucks, but I do want them to live. So what we were able to do is I was able to get Clay to use the backhoe and dig out a really nice big hole. You want it bigger than the root ball um, to start with to give um, you plenty of room around it. And then I filled in some compost underneath, some very well rotted wood chips to kind of give it some extra loose nutrients up at the bottom, set the tree in so that it's level with this ground surface here, but then use the extra soil um, because it's been loosened up plus the whole tree root ball is in there taking up space to kind of build a moat around it so that water will kind of get um, trapped in and, and held around the tree. It's like a little mini um, well, it wouldn't be a swale, but a little miniature water catchment there. So that as they water it, tree, it water holds right around the um, tree. Now that's pretty fluffed up right now because the dirt's all just been moved around. That won't be quite such a big moat after it settles down. But now the next steps I have to do is I've got more bark mulch in the pile you can see behind Burley, who's busy on rodent patrol. Um, that's just ground up trees that have been rotting for about eight years. And... Um, gonna mulch the top of the soil with that and then use some of this grassy stuff that's um, just it wasn't officially making hay but from mowing down this field after we bought it um, and mulch on top of that so that's all to add nutrients and hold moisture and hopefully get these little trees off to a really good start so as soon as possible we can be getting some good food uh, production because I love fresh fruit and that's the hope and Burley, Burley's busy making rodent, making sure rodents can't invade the orchard. So that's what I'm working on. And this is the start of my little orchard. I am just working at planting here. This is actually an apricot. As you see, I've got it partially planted. Um, I'll finish that, but I was tired of shoveling dirt, so it took time to stop and record this. Next, over there, um, already finished up, kind of hiding behind the stakes, is a little apple. Um, over there with the sprinkler running on it, because I planted it, finished it up this morning, is a cherry. Um, clear over on this far side is another variety of apple. And as we come around the apricot, there is a third apple. And that one is a pear. So, that is what I've got start of the orchard this year is six trees. Now I did buy slightly bigger trees for 
these first handful because I do want to have a chance of getting some um, fruit before too many years. Next spring I hope to plant a whole lot more and probably due to finances a lot of them will be much smaller um, and therefore take more time to give me a yield. But I wanted to get started with some bigger ones that would get going faster. So as you can see here with the ones I'm totally done with, our, our fence around the perimeter is not done yet, so I have temporarily put these little wire cages around here to keep deer or anything from munching them off. And after the hole is filled in, oh hey, there's my shadow. Um, they've been mulched the whole way around the circle with plenty of uh, well-rotted wood chips. Those are about eight years old. And then covered up with some of the um, straw or grass hay that we made just by mowing down everything around here and that's all to help um, both break down and feed nutrients into the soil around the, the growing tree and to help keep the soil nice and moist and um, make it easier for it to grow hopefully and clear over in the edge there you can see Burley scratching his back by rolling upside down in the grass a little goofball Right there in the middle is one of the little baby pine trees that we planted. And a big pile of fence panels that needs put up. Right over there, hiding between the fencing is another one. What we've tried to do is tuck these little guys in to where they're mostly sheltered by these poplars, because normally um, baby pine trees would grow up under their mama pine trees and have some protection and and shelter as they're growing. So we're trying to give them that. Poplars are a very fast growing tree. That's what was here when we bought the place. And they're also a relatively in the tree world, fast dying tree. So we're trying to take advantage of them while they are, you know, while those 25 foot stalks are there to shelter and um, support getting some more other things going. Um, so we have some more variety. There, there can be some poplars, but we know this, this current crop isn't going to last forever. So that is what we've got going. And just like in the orchard, you can see how I've made it kind of a, a well there to catch water. And this one I have not yet gotten to mulching and um, covering with bark chips. Though Bartley can check on it anyway. Anyway, that's what those are looking like. Got five baby pines in as of now two more to plant at the moment, and then eventually a whole lot more probably of all kinds of trees and bushes. That's what that is looking like right now. from its name, it's a very cold hardy bush. Um, they're very little right now. They will get up to 15, maybe even 20 feet high when they're fully mature. Um, they don't produce an edible food for people, but what they do is they're in the um, legume family, the same as peas and beans, and they're great for nitrogen fixing, which is good for your overall soil health. Plus they bloom in the spring with beautiful yellow blossoms that all the pollinators love. And then they make a little pea, which, while not edible to humans, is loved by various birds, chickens, etc. Um, so they are good for making a very hardy screen, enriching the soil, and providing habitat and food for pollinators and birds. And my birds monitor the uh, insects I don't want around my garden and trees and such. So these are number seven and eight, I guess, that have planted, and there'll probably be a whole lot more, but that's what we're doing right now. Planting some little pea shrubs, and once they're in the dirt here, I gotta go get some of my, more of my wood chips to kind of mulch around them, help keep the grass down, fertilize the soil around them, help retain moisture, all of that, get them watered in, and 
Hopefully they'll grow big and happy and bushy. chips that were put in that Burley's tail is going to be right in front of the camera. Yes, I love you. Um, some of into the hole under the tree and now I'm using it to mulch my little berm around the tree as well. Again, to add both nutrients and help, um, you know, hold moisture. So, last step, that tree is almost done, is pick up a bunch of this stuff because it's just laying here on top and this is dried up. If I didn't have that I'd probably get um, an actual hay or straw bale. But we've got this all over here from having mowed off that grass earlier and I'm just going to use that as a kind of protective mulch on top of there. And again that will break down over time and add even more nutrients. Hey beef baby. Kind of in the way of the camera. How about you come over here? Yeah, I'm not bending over to pet you right now. I'm bending over to work. You can kind of see it looks like kind of a deep hole down in there, but uh, this stuff will all compact here as I water it and it, it settles down, but I will be left with a little tree well there to catch moisture and so on. Oh, and the other thing I forgot to mention that's going to go in here yet is um, or around there is I'm going to make some willow water by soaking will cut up willow tips in water. Willows are very, very good at rooting and willow water is often used as a root stimulator. And so I, I want these roots to get going and growing as fast as possible. So I'm gonna water each tree with some of that and then use a little bit of the, um, it's almost like a compost tea with lots of microbes that I have used in my garden before and just see if we can get some more good microbial life um, going in the soil around all of these trees. So they get to be very big and healthy. And the breeze is kind of blowing that trunk a little crooked right now, if you're going to tell me that. Um, I, once they're, I've got the stakes in around the fence, I can tie the trees off to that to make sure they get growing nice and straight here to start. And by fall, the leaves start to die back on everything. They got buried under snow for the winter. Went from looking like little sticks, uh, little twigs sticking up to almost nothing sticking up at one point. And then as spring rolled around, the snow started to melt off again. And so far, almost all of them seem to have survived. None of the trees are quite leafed out yet for the spring, but they are starting to open. You can see swelling buds. So... That, uh, that's a success. It's always fun when something you've planted makes it through the winter and looks good in the spring. So most of the things we planted, trees that we planted and bushes and such last year seem to have, they're all starting to leaf out right now, they seem to have survived the winter. This is one of the two exceptions. This little guy actually didn't die from winter. It was a, a little uh, fir tree. I don't know what happened to it because it had died already before winter. 
just in case it was going to grow something green back out of the base. I left it sit here, but it's spring enough now that nothing is green. Pretty sure it's dead, so it's going to be replaced with this little fellow instead. And there was one other one that did die through the winter. It was green going into winter and woke up in the spring brown and has been going browner. Everything else seemed to have survived, so that's pretty cool. Hi folks, Ariel over here. Thanks for spending some of your valuable time watching these videos. Hopefully you found something beautiful, educational, interesting, peaceful, relaxing, or useful while you are here. If so, find more videos here, subscribe so you don't miss any updates, and if you like what you found here, feel free to like and share away so that others can benefit as well. You all have a wonderful day.